Hello viewers, well now I am joined by Irving Zonka, the Head of Game Design for Sebastian Loeb Rally. Irving, we've spoken before going through the evolution of rally titles here at Milestone. Tell me the initial challenges then on moving to the next generation formats, uh, on putting together the design sheet for uh, Sebastian Loeb Rally. Well, uh, since, uh, <coughs> since we were moving to the next generation consoles, we wanted to do what we couldn't achieve with the old uh, rally games that we made here at Milestone. So, uh, starting uh, uh, from the pitch design, from the concept design, we moved to something that was more uh, realistic and was more, uh, you know, close to, the, to what people were expecting from us. So, for example, for the first time in uh, video game history, we have the um, real circuits, real rally roads into the game. So, for example, we have 300 kilometers of roads into the game and every piece of road is really existing uh, in the real world, so you can have a real rally on that, uh, on that stage. Uh, we wanted to, since also uh, the, the development of this game took longer than the previous rally games that we made, we also wanted to rebuild a lot of things from scratch. So, for example, the game physics, that is something that is very important. We built a, a lot of things from scratch, like for example the Volt Tire model, that is now using a Pacheca model, a brand new Pacheca model, I will talk it, about it later. So it was really a massive switch from the old uh, series that we made and we hope that the final result will be enjoyable by, by the people who is expecting the title. Well obviously we've seen a lot of investment uh, in terms of the graphics and the visuals. Uh, obviously the audio, we'll come back to that and more detail on the physics, but let's start off with the visuals then. Uh, brand new advanced visuals, new lighting system, uh, there's great solidity to the environments. Uh, but 30 frames per second on console, unlocked on PC. Uh, what are the challenges with the new consoles? What's been the sort of biggest challenge in levelling the field between Xbox One and PS4? And you've selected 30 frames. You know, what, what kind of limitations does that bring in, in terms of, say, if you adopted for 60 frames development? Well, the, um, the main issue about the consoles and the 30 frame rate per second choice is because uh, we had to put a, a huge amount of things uh, into the, the platforms. So, for example, when, uh, when you develop a rally title, you really have to have a huge variety of texture, you have a very big environment, a lot of draw distance, you have to avoid pop-up, uh, switching the texture too close to the camera and so on. You have particles, uh, you have the physics that has to be, it's quite heavy to be calculated by the CPU because, uh, you know, we wanted to improve uh, the, the, the cycles of the physics so it's heavier than other previous games. We had to face a lot of, uh, you know, choices uh, and since we don't want to cut out features like, I don't know, surfaces, uh, number of trees into the scene, uh, crowd and so on, we had to choose 30 frames per second on the, on the console systems. That's because, you know, uh, rally games are very, very different from uh, games that, that just have the, the circuits in it. You have a big road, uh, 10 kilometers of stages, uh, uh, all the shaders that are working together and it, it was quite uh, difficult to achieve more than 30 frames per second. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we see in terms of field of view, Pikes Peak is the best example. You can see the peak in the background the whole time while you're driving. You know, it's important that you get that depth of field. Next challenge for Milestone has been audio. Now there are audio improvements here, it's a continuing improving thing. Why is audio so difficult to get right? What's been the key challenge here? Is it investment? Is it the type of equipment? Is it an understanding on how to get the best audio? It's a mix of everything, uh, because uh, could, uh, could look simple to put a sound straight into a game, but it is not. Uh, you really touched all the important issues about uh, audio. It's about the uh, devices that you use to record the car. It's the, also the availability of the car itself. For example, we were able to record a real um, Peugeot 205 Pikes Peak for the game but it's a very rare model so you can't stress too much the engine so you have to you must take just a few takes of the engine and you have to work what you can uh, you can record so it's not just okay give me the car for two days I, I, I try everything and then I decide when it, when it's okay 
So also the way the sound uh, performs according to the physics is a very, very complex matter, but we wanted to make improvements also on that side. So we have now a big audio department with four guys working on, uh, on the games in order to improve every time. The, we also used some uh, outsourcing straight from England in order to improve the quality uh, for the skid marks, for the volumes, for the mixing. We used a professional studio for mixing the, game, the, the sounds of the game and uh, we think that the sound has been really improved uh, since the past. You can really feel what the car is doing by listening to the skids, uh, uh, to the way that the uh, tires squeal into the corner. Uh, we are quite happy about the improvement that we made also on that uh, on, on that point. No, it's an interesting point because I, I often say that you know real cars we hear a distorted audio. I think that's the thing. And people watch, say, for example, Formula One on TV, and they think that's how Formula One car sounds. Well, it doesn't. They use co they use compressed microphones. A Formula One car is a distorted deafening or was a distorted deafening sound and so you don't really get the same audio note and it's the same with all uh, uh, sort of racing cars and everything so loud but of course the big issue is always the physics you've had Sebastian Loeb in here giving you uh, you know sort of feedback on the type of physics to find the right balance people are always saying to me where does the game position itself is it a simulation is it an arcade where are the physics? Tell me about them. I think that the physics uh, uh, represent the the hardest simulation that you can get uh, right now on a console. You have to understand how to drive the car because uh, it's not just a video game, it's, it's a simulation. It's more a simulation than a simcade that is used to say when, uh, when we talk about a console game. It's way more uh, on the simulation side rather than uh, Gran Turismo or Forza Motorsport. Also because we wanted to put realism in all the parts of the game. So you are driving a car that is uh, totally simulated without any aids at the pro level in a road that is very narrow with a lot of corners because the tracks are the real tracks. We didn't widen corners, etc. Everything is just as in, real in reality. When you turn off all the aids, the car doesn't have any aids. So it's just uh, the, physics mo the physics model that works and you have to drive it. So uh, we have proper damages, so it could be quite easy to make a tire explode uh, at the third corner of, uh, of a stage. So let me say that uh, we are taking a risk because we are putting on the market uh, a proper simulation. We hope that all the fans will like it since a lot of people is uh, asking for simulations. We, we are taking this risk and we hope that the people will enjoy it. Brilliant. I haven't played it yet, but I look forward to testing it out. Um, final question then. Uh, massive game, loads of modes, everything's improved, pretty much built from scratch. Um, oh, one other aspect as well, is this a brand new graphics engine from the ground up, or is it uh, an improved graphics engine you have? And the other question is, I always like to ask a developer, what's the aspect you're most proud of in, in the game? You know, you've come all this way, all these modes, what's the you're most proud of? Well, the, the, about the engine, uh, we totally reworked all, all the, um, the rally part of the engine. So, uh, since we had, uh, we wanted to stop for two years in order to rework some parts of the engine. It's not totally brand new. It's the same engine we have in, uh, developed in house during these years, but the part concerning the rally is totally new uh, because now we can manage, we can afford to have stages uh, that are very, very, very long. We couldn't afford to have long long stages in the past so the rally specific part has been rewritten but the core of the engine is still the same that we were improving every year since uh, 2013 2014 to the next gen step uh, one thing that I am very proud of is that uh, uh, Sebastian Liberalivo is very is very loyal to his spirit. Okay, we we designed uh, with a pitch. We designed a game that wanted to be the most beautiful rally simulator on the market. Okay, and this is, this game is about rally. Yeah. Really, is about rally. Real stages, real car, 60 models that are beautiful and go from uh, the Abarth A112 to the Pikes Peak cars. Uh, uh, passing through the Lancia Delta S4 uh, and the Renault 5, uh, a, a lot of beautiful cars, a lot of game modes, so the player is really free to enjoy the game as he wishes. We also put uh, autocross features just, you know, to chill out a little bit from a rally to another because the 
competition is very hard on the stages. So I really think that the player will, will be able to enjoy the game as he wants. Uh, choose his favorite car, uh, no, team, no team management, no contracts to sign. You just have your cars, you have uh, the dealership, you can buy new cars, enjoy new cars, drive where you want, improve the car, it's really, uh, we're proud of this uh, freedom that you have and this loyalty to the real discipline. Well, that's what I like. I mean, I'm all about the driving, and a lot of our viewers are as well. Irvin, thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you, Alan, thank you. So a big thanks there to Irvin for his time, and it sort of gave us a bit of an insight into the amount of work that goes into developing something like this, and I think it's uh, interesting the route they've taken in terms of simulation and r replicating the real rally stages and they will be the only rally game that's really gone to that length in actually doing all of the real stages rather than just sort of corners and bits and pieces here and there these are the actual stages so that's it for part two and the developer interview part three I'll be testing the game myself and giving you my initial impressions based on the testing I've put in so far and the gameplay so far and then after that we'll have some comparison videos as well but that's it from me for now as ever more soon <laughs>